A record-breaking dry spell lasting over 30 days is uh, scorching eight countries. El Nino and climate change are fueling this disaster, inflicting severe damage on crops and livestock over the past five years. Dr. Rodney Mananga, Senior Research Specialist at the Human Sciences Research Council, now joins us to unpack this discussion a bit more further. Uh, Dr. Rodney, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening here in SABC News. I mean, just looking at that story, it's quite devastating stating uh, what uh, this erratic uh, um, climate has caused for farmers. Uh, thank you, um, Bali, and uh, good evening to, to the viewers. Uh, yes, um, as you have indicated, the uh, dry spell that we are uh, dealing with, uh, that is largely caused by the ongoing El Nino, uh, actually has devastated uh, the southern Africa, uh, which you have just mentioned, there are about eight countries, uh, which uh, mostly you can include uh, Zambia, uh, Angola, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Botswana, uh, and Madagascar, were the most one that were mostly hit by this drought. Uh, and this has led to uh, some countries like Zambia and Zimbabwe and Malawi to declare state of uh, disaster because the drought it, uh, or this drought spell uh, has led to a crop failure, a dying of the livestock. Uh, if we, we are just looking at the numbers uh, from the October last year, I think over 9,000 uh, livestock have counted to die because of this uh, drought. So this, um, because especially when we look at uh, the impact on the agricultural sector, agriculture, uh, actually depended mostly on the um, on the weather, but more so to the southern uh, Africa region because uh, the over seventy percent of the the, the 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 population relied on the subsistence farming, and if you check one of the conditions is that they rely on rainfall uh, for their uh, food production. So this makes this um, the, the 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 region. Uh, more vulnerable to some uh, um, crisis like this one that we are discussing now. So uh, that's why now the uh, a call for uh, the humanitarian um, help uh, in some countries, but also the to call the the the, the governments, uh, those who work in the the, the 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 development mostly the policy action to see how we can able to respond to this uh, drought. Mm. And one would also ask, uh, you know, what is the cause of this uh, El Nino and uh, what role does climate change play to the weather patterns we are seeing in the, in the SADC region? Uh, thank you, Mbali. Um, I think we are living in a reality of uh, climate change. Uh, then now we are no longer seeing the climate change. Uh, it's uh, maybe the, 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 the potential uh, risk that uh, we are living with. Uh, we have seen it more frequent, uh, this kind of crisis, like the, the, the El Nino. If we just remember very well, uh, the 2015-2016, um, uh, the, 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 the season, uh, we were devastated by another a very drought spell, which uh, I think in South Africa was uh, also affected uh, dearly than the uh, by the one that we are we are discussing now. So then we can able to see that now when we are talking uh, last week we were talking about floods that were happening in some part of uh, uh, KwaZulu Natal, and then we are happening. This is it's trying to it's happening every almost every year. In, in, in many parts of the of the world. And uh, we can even see uh, the call that was made even last year during the COP28, uh, that we need to deal with the impact of the climate change because we are seeing the, its impact, it's being felt, especially more by the developing countries uh, because the response that we have in terms of limited resources uh, wouldn't be uh, like those that can be uh, done in the more developed countries. So that's why now we are calling to say that um, we need to find a ways to prepare 
uh, for this kind of uh, the drought, uh, because the one that we are we are discussing now, there are reports that it might be over by mid uh, April or so. But uh, I can tell you, I just mentioned the one that happened 2015, 2016. So we may prepare for the next one, um, not long. So we need to get the food systems, the agricultural sector, and actually all developmental sector in general to be ready, to be resilient to this kind of um, uh, the, the disaster. Mm. What does this mean for the agricultural sector, especially seeing such a dry spell and uh, farmers are not even able uh, to uh, plant their crop? Uh, thank you, Mbali. Um, what it means to agriculture sector, the impact is very, very um, high uh, because we know that uh, when we talk about agriculture sector, especially the food production, we already see that the uh, this is actually escalating the level of food uh, insecurity and uh, that it will be linked to the the issues of uh, poverty so like i just mentioned that majority of uh, the families in southern africa region they rely on the agriculture for their livelihoods so they get the their uh, their, their their food uh, from the the the, the agricultural uh, activities and also also the source of income so if we then now we have a crop failure the dying of the livestock uh, and then we know that uh, those families will be very much uh, devastated some will be the number of the people who will be going to bed hungry uh, mm. will increase but also this is also translates to the effect on the uh, economy uh, because we know that when you talk about agriculture, although if you just look at the numbers on the GDP, but we know that it play a very critical role in terms of economy and in terms of employment. So uh, most of the people, they have lost their job uh, because yeah. of this kind of drought, because the failure of the crops means that the farmers cannot be able to sell well, so that they can able to pay also the, those that are working in their farms. Mm. And uh, one thing that we see now, uh, maybe the last thing is that we started to see the, the, the even the, uh, the rains that are coming now, they are coming late because what we need in agriculture is a timely and uh, also reliable rainfall that will come uh, during early enough when the, 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 the planting season start begin, especially the summer for summer crops. And Dr. Rodney, you keep on saying that we should prepare better. How do we prepare better to avoid such a crisis? Uh, thank you um, uh, for that question. And when we to say we uh, need to prepare better, um, I think uh, we on Monday, uh, as the, uh, the, 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 the research institution, like uh, Human Sciences Research Council, uh, together with the uh, Food, Agriculture and Natural Resources Policy Analysis Network, uh, and Agricultural Research Council, and uh, the K South Africa, and uh, also the other partners as well, uh, will be convening uh, 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 some sort of uh, the briefing uh, that we are going to look at the leveraging the research, the policy advocacy and stakeholder engagement yeah. so that we bring the awareness of the intervention that are needed to make the, uh, the, the agricultural sector or the make the uh, the communities to be prepared. So there are intervention that can be immediate and then uh, those that can be also for the long term. But if you are just looking at to uh, the cube, the impact of this ongoing and you know, we'll All be right. looking mostly on the uh, immediate in, uh, intervention, but we need to build the resilience of the agricultural sector itself so that the farmers, the, the crop that they are growing, I mentioned that they rely more on rain. There can be uh, issues of supporting with more irrigation and also uh, adopting the climate smart agriculture technologies uh, that they can able to uh, make them resilient to some of these uh, crises like a drought. Dr. Rodney, thank you so much uh, for your time. That is uh, Dr. Rodney Mananga, Senior Research Specialist at the Human Sciences Research Council.